Hello students, I am going to talk on the ethnic identity movement in Northeast India, a case study of the Chilang Roms. Now, in order to understand the complex processes of ethnic identity movements among the three cognate tribes of the Chemis, Rungmais and Liangmais, together known as the Chilangrongs, which inhabit the geographically contiguous but politically different districts of the Minglong in western hills of Manipur, North Kasar Hills in the Kasar district of Assam, and Perin district of Naga Hills, I propose to examine two important interrelated issues. The first is the socio-economic and political religious conditions of the then areas inhabited by these three tribes. And secondly, the transformation which took place after the coming of the Britishers and within which grew the movement of Jadunang and Rani Gaidinliu. As we all know, Jadunang was executed in 1931 and the movement started by him was continued under the leadership of Rani Gaiden Liu, who was then a young girl of 13 years only. She was arrested in 1932 and put in different jails in Northeast India till 1947 when India got her independence. After her release, she stayed in Nagaland in Kohima and from there continued to work for the reunification of the geographical areas inhabited by the three cognate tribes. So, this is the study of the three cognate tribes coming together under a new identity that is the Chilangrongs. Now, in order to understand the dynamics of this movement, we have to look into the socio-economic and political religious conditions which consist of four important aspects from which grew the movement. So, first of all, let us examine the colonial administrative policy and the Chilangrongs. Before we talk of the colonial administrative system, we have to study the Jalangrong traditional political system and structure and how it got changed and transformed after the coming of the Britishers and this also provided the necessary preconditions for the emergence of the movement. A traditional Jalangrong village consists of a residence belonging to a few exogamous clans. The village is controlled and administered by a chief in consultation with a council of elders. The chief known as Kulakpa among the Rungmais of Manipur and Matai among the Jamis of North Kasar Hills in consultation with the council of elders decided all inter-clan conflicts. The chief also decided the duration and time of religious festivals and he also parcels out cultivable land to the villagers. The chief was in fact the administrative, the religious as well as the war head of the village. The village council included almost all the clan heads of the village along with the priests who held a very important position in the Jalangrong society. The council as a body are a fairly effective constitutional check on the powers of the priest and the councillors, apart from their privileged social status, also occupied some of the best homelands because of their position. Now, with the British occupation of Manipur and the neighbouring hills, the British political agent in the initial phase administered the hill areas of Manipur by classifying the hills into five lumps or areas and each lump being looked after by a lump subedar who got the salary of rupees 15 per month and each of them was assisted by five lumpus with a salary of rupees 7 per month. The system, however, was abolished after some time and the chief or the headman was empowered with a red cloth to administer his respective villages and now they were known as Gonburas in most of the hill areas. However, there were some few people who worked as interpreters who could communicate in English, in Hindi and native languages known as the Bashis in the Naga Hills and in the North Kasar Hills. In Manipur, however, the Lampus worked as interpreters and intermediaries. Now this newly found power of the chief was, however, not much as compared to the earlier traditional power and authority which it enjoyed.
Now, one of the most important function of the chief was the collection of house tax of rupees two per house, which was increased to rupees three later on, and a commission of 12.5% of the amount collected was given to the chief. In the case of the Naga Hills and the North Kasar Hills, administration was done directly by the district commissioner in consultation with the local officers. The second aspect which we have to examine is the colonial forest policy and the Jalang Rongs. Now, at that time, forest was classified into three categories, reserve forest, village forest and unclassed forest. Many areas of the forest were cut, converted into reserve forest by the Britishers and Prohibition of cutting in trees and bamboos and shooting of birds, etc., was prohibited in all these reserve areas, and extraction of forest product was also prohibited. So the hill villagers, they were not allowed to enter into these reserve forests, and Jhum agriculture, which was the mainstay of Jilangrong economy, was affected because of the new forest laws. Now, all the forest products from the western forests of Manipur, particularly, Bamboo and timber was controlled by the Kasar Forest Authority and Manipur got only 75% and the Kasar Forest Authority retained 25% of the total forest product for management. Now added to this, the Lampus also collected free service of Potang from the hill villagers for construction of bashas and providing security service and they were also supposed to provide food for the touring officers. So we see that the introduction of the new economic conception like house tax and cash, establishment of government rights over forests and fisheries thoroughly uprooted the traditional self-sufficient economic life of the hill people and this intrusion of money economy coupled with rigid tax collection system ruined the Jalangrongs. Let us examine the coming of Christianity in the Jalangrong areas. In the traditional Jalangrong society, the priest or the healer had a very important role in the village council. The priest also had a very privileged status in the traditional social structure and he performed all the important rites and rituals of the community. And the traditional Jalangrong society believed in a supreme being. Among the Rungmais in Manipur, they worshipped a supreme god called Dumbapoy. Among the Jamis, they worshipped four principal gods, Sibrai, who was the head god, Morshini, who was the god of crop, Songhu, who regulated fights and quarrels in the villages, and Gaza, who was the god of war. Now, Christianity came with the support of the British officers and the missionaries were encouraged to go deep in the hill villages and spread the gospel along with pro-British propaganda. So this was a direct attack on the power and authority of the priests. Because of this uh, propaganda work of the Britishers in 1920, a Rungmai Naga called K. Namzarin Pao came to Tamenglong for evangelization work. He succeeded in converting another Rungmai Naga named Jinlakpo, who was a government employee and who was on census duty at that time. Similarly, in the Naga Hills, the first two Christians were Mr. Kenesi and uh, Sarangbi, and they established a church in Benryu village, which was opposed by the Liangmais. In the North Kasar Hills also, the Christian missionaries started working among the Jamis, but it was very slow because of the resistance from the traditional hill villagers. So when we see that, so when Christianity came, the entire traditional religious system was attacked and there was a lot of reactions from the hill villagers. The fourth aspect which we have to examine is the cookie migration and the Jalangrongs. The Jalangrongs had a system of zoom cultivation which involved burning of plants, trees, forest land and their system was based on the cyclical migration. A piece of land, once it is cultivated in a given year, the villagers will leave it fallow for at least five to six years to recoup their fertility and then they will come back to the land for cultivation. Now it has been recorded that the cookies are migratory groups and the cookies political system was essentially expansionist in nature. They used to set up new villages in many places in Northeast India and in their search for village sites, they often encroach upon the Jalangrong lands. 
It also must be noted that when a cookie chief dies, except for the elder child who inherits the property, other children, they move out and set their own villages. This is the reason why there are so many cookie villages in the entire northeastern region. Now, this disturbed not only the Jalangrong cyclical agricultural system, but also created animosities between the two communities, which became very apparent during the Jadunang and the Gaiden Liu movement. Now, after discussing all these four aspects, let us come to the second issue of the political movement led by Jaduna, which logically emerged out of all these factors. Now, it was in that kind of a situation that we have just discussed that Jaduna, who was a Maiba or a healer, was trying to organize the Jalangrong masses to fight against all forms of oppressions, particularly against the Britishers. Jaduna was born in Kambiron, which was located in the Imphal Tamengrong Road, and right from childhood, he was exposed to various forms of activities which was taking place in this Imphal Tamengrong Road, trade, movement of British officers, lampus, police force, etc. And so he was aware of what was happening in the neighboring areas or in the neighboring villages. By profession, he was a Maiba or a healer and traveled from village to village and therefore had a very close connection with the common hillmen. He also had gone to Silcha, which was the headquarter of the Kassar district. And Kassar was a place where a lot of tea plantations had started. And Silcha was also very close to Silet district, which was a center of Bengali politics. And therefore, he also had ideas of the Indian national movement, which was taking place in India at that time. Therefore, he was a very well aware and well informed person during those times. And he also knew that the common Liangmai, Rungmais, and the Jamis people were having a lot of grievances against the new economic policies of the colonial authority, particularly the house tax, hunting or fishing, and rules, which deprived the traditional Jalangrongs of their traditional sources of livelihood and also against the Christian missionaries which had intruded in the Jalangrong land. To do this, Jadunang reorganized the Jalangrong traditional religion, which was known as Hiraka. The new religion believed in a supreme being called Tinkau Ragwa. In a significant way, Jadunang constructed a temple for the first time, and he even established norms of prayers in the temple. Now, many Jalangrongs from far off places used to come to the temple, and since Jadunang needed money to organize the movement, he started charging fees for performing rituals and treating the sick people. He charged rupees two for offering prayer for a dead person, rupees three to four for treating a sick man or a sick person, and he also kept a python in his temple in order to command respect and awe from the common people. Now, in order to politically organize the youths, he took a group of young people to Silcho, where Gandhi was supposed to have addressed a meeting. Although Gandhi did not come, he was instrumental in making the young boys and girls aware of modern politics by exposing them in various activities in Silchar and in the nearby towns. It can also be pointed out that in order to create a sense of confidence among the common people, he even invented a script for the Jalangrongs, although it was not taken seriously by the then colonial authorities. Archival records also reveals that tensions, animosities, and distrust increased between the cookies and the Jalangrongs during those days for reasons stated before, but Jadunang always avoided an open conflict with the cookies. Jadunang had also started planning for a strong political movement for the Rungmais and other kindred tribes against all kinds of exploiters. His followers, including Rani Gaiden Liu, even started military training during those days. Now he started telling the people that the days of the Nagas had come and this kind of prophecy given by him was commented by Stephen Fuchs, who was a historian, as similar to other kinds of millenarian movements in other parts of India, particularly the one led by Birsa Munda, a tribal leader. 
Now, in one or two instances, he also asked the Jalangrong people not to pay taxes to the government but to him. So he was obviously influenced by the ideas of non-cooperation and the civil disobedience movement. But unfortunately, in 1930, three beetle nut traders were attacked and murdered. But on investigation, it was revealed that the traders had entered the village on a Jena day when no outsiders were allowed or permitted to enter. The incident was kept secret for about 10 months, but when it got known, the colonial authority took advantage of it and they framed charges against Jadunang and he was arrested and executed on 29th August 1931 at Imphal. But by this time, he had succeeded in organizing the Jalangrongs around the Heraka religion, which became a very systematized tribal religion during those days. And he was also successful in arousing consciousness among the Jalangrong people to resist any kind of oppression and exploitation. The movement after him was continued by Rani Gaiden Liu, and it will be discussed in the next lecture.